How are you? Joe Rafferty, CEO of Vestec. And uh, we're here raising $16 million in Series B. And we are looking for a lead investor. We just closed out a flat round of Series A, and we've got about $10 million total in. What is Vestec? We've got a catheter. It's an over-the-wire catheter that delivers nitinol sutures either at the index procedure, the initial implant, or there are about a million patients around the world that have got these grafts implanted already, and they're failing at an alarming rate. So we can go back in and give physicians a tool to secure those grafts and repair those, uh, those patients. Uh, interestingly enough, we just uh, did our first three uh, inhuman cases, and um, we sent out a number of, uh, of um, press releases. Well, we've got the old deck. Can you go back a slide? Anyway, I had some pictures of uh, a gentleman by the name of um, Sean Lydon, who's the chairman of the Department of Vascular Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic, who did one of our first in, in human cases. And we sent a press release out, and one of our big investors sent a note back and said, if Sean Lydon is the chairman of the Department of Vascular Surgery at Cleveland Clinic, he's kind of like the Michael Jordan of vascular surgery. And I think what I read in your press release was, Michael Jordan likes your sneakers. That it's, it's a, a tool that these physicians absolutely need. Uh, the problem, open surgical procedure is the gold standard. If you get on the table with any comorbidities, you've got a 20% chance of not getting off the table. 80% of these procedures are done percutaneously. Two small holes in the arteries and the groin, the graft's implanted, and the patient typically goes home in a day or so. The challenge is that the peer-reviewed literature suggests that they're not durable at all. In fact, one of our uh, KOLs that just signed on as an uh, advisory board member said that for 25 years we've been doing the same thing, kind of like the definition of insanity. We're putting the same graphs in. They don't stay in place. We need other tools. There really are no other tools out there. Uh, as I said, why now? 80% of the patients around the world are being addressed this way. The peer-reviewed literature is finally catching up and suggesting at five years, 21%. Most of the KOLs will say that 21% is probably closer to 40 or 50%. And if you go to the Cleveland Clinic or, or Vanderbilt or Mayo, uh, they're, they're doing four or five, six of these repair procedures a week. Payers are shifting from fee-for-service to quality initiatives. They don't want these patients coming back. This procedure was actually shut down in the UK for about two years because with socialized medicine, they knew what they were paying for. Uh, and then the solution is ours, it's Vestec. There's one company out there right now that's got a technology, Medtronic has got a product called, um, well, it was called Aptus, now it's called Helifix. To Medtronic's credit, they've been doing a great job of plowing our green fields. The, uh, the device is an old first generation device. We've got a newer device, but the physicians are very much aware that, that when the endo anchors are put in, patients do better. So we're going to benefit from that. It's a platform technology. We can secure uh, tower graphs and, and minimize perivalvular leak all the way down to the iliac limbs. So we'll have five or six different devices that we can bring to market. It's a big market. Uh, we think we can bring an additional incremental uh, billion dollars to it. We've got clearance from the uh, FDA that it is a 510K pathway. The Aptus device is our predicate. There are existing DRGs and CPT codes for the initial implant and for repair procedures. Two big markets, the initial implant, and then also, as I suggested, these repair procedures. There's a million patients out there globally that need solutions. Uh, this is the device. Um, the first generation device, the newer one, looks very similar to this. We've got a, a biasing mesh that opens up and it holds the catheter against the wall. And then as you can see, the suture delivery windows, we're literally pulling sutures down into that window. One of the nice uh, nuances to this is if a physician goes to position the suture, doesn't like the suture position, can retract it, that's what's going on here, retract it, move it, and then re-deliver or deliver that suture in a different position. So very fast, very safe, very easy. And when surgeons see this, the sutures going in, it's, it's very comfortable for them. They've all sutured in their, whether it's residency, fellowship, interventionalist surgeons. So you can see how fast that goes. 
Top left, the luminal surface of a Dacron graft. Uh, top right, the through and through of the adventitia, which is critical, because when we secure the graft to the adventitia, it doesn't move, it's not going anywhere, and that's the important part. Um, the uh, picture on the, the left there, uh, Dr. Dai Yamanuchi from University of Wisconsin, first time he had the device in his hands, delivered the sutures in the proximal neck, which will hold the graft in place to the aorta, but then he wanted to show the, and this is a gore graft, he wanted to show how precise he could deliver the next round of sutures and just to prove that it wasn't a fluke, he did it again where he positioned the sutures in between the stent struts there to show exactly how precise the device is. As I said, there's one competitive device out there. Medtronic has done a great job of, of building the business. The challenge is it's not easy to use and, um, and physicians tell us they want a, a third or fourth generation device. <clears throat> um, exceptional clinical flexibility because the physicians that designed this device designed it to overcome the current clinical limitations. It fits smoothly into their existing procedure. We're not interested in creating a disruptive technology where we've got to recreate a $5 billion market. We want this to fit in with the same, the same uh, workflow. We've gotten an awful lot accomplished in the last couple of years. We've raised uh, almost $10 million right now. Our manufacturing and uh, R&D office is in Carlsbad. Um, a lot of the uh, ACS guidance people are there, so they've been there, done that, and, and done a number of, of startups. Uh, as I said, we've, we've got uh, three of our, uh, of our first in human cases done, a number of, of uh, preclinical cases. We're raising $16 million, and our goal is to have FDA clearance by the middle to the end of 2025. Relative to uh, NDAs and potential M&A partners, uh, the majority of the space knows this. There have been a number of very big and lucrative um, acquisitions over the last number of years. Way back in 2015, Medtronic paid $110 million for uh, Aptus, and I don't know that they had $20 million in revenue at that point in time. One of the important things that we've gone after is that when we got the, uh, the technology and the IP, the initial IP was a little long in the, in the tooth, so we uh, set out to create some additional protection for the next 20 years. We've got extensive IP on the entire catheter, the distal part, the sutures, uh, the handle, and, and so a potential m and partner will have some, uh, some, a very long runway, if you will. We've got a, uh, an all-star team. Our, our founders, Udoga and Richard, are founders that you don't want to shoot. Sean Lydon is uh, the Michael Jordan of uh, vascular surgery. Ted Stalker and, and Kent Wolfman uh, have been with us for many years. ACS Guide and uh, Ted started Pathway. He was a co-founder of Pathway. And Bob Mitchell has been called the smartest guy in the endovascular space. The advisory board is on advisory boards for Medtronic, Cook, Gore, Terumo. And, uh, and they are the who's who in the industry. So we've got a fantastic team, a great technology that all of these physicians tell us they need, and there's significant global unmet need. So we're here to, to let you know it's a tremendous opportunity, and uh, we'd love for you to talk about a $16 million investment. Thanks.